Okay, so last time we were finishing up the auto cycle and we realized that, ah, those pesky compression ratios, they're just killing us because we reach um, auto ignition way too early. And so now we're going into the diesel cycle and they have an answer for that pesky issue with compression ratios, which is simply, let's just remove the fuel because the only reason we have auto ignition is because the fuel ignites. If there's no fuel, it won't ignite. Okay, so if you're wondering, well, how does this work if we have no fuel? Don't worry. We have to change a couple of other things to make it work. We do put the fuel in eventually. So in diesel engines, I only compress the air. Air gets taken in, I compress it. There's no auto ignition unless I go to massively high compression ratios, at which point I'm probably doing all kinds of interesting physics and causing fusion and other magic things. We're creating the sun. We're not going to do that in our engine. No, we're only going to compress the air. Now, because I'm only compressing the air, I can have compression ratios, which are much, much higher. Like before with auto cycle, that was somewhere usually between eight to 12. Like 12 was as high as I could go. This is where the diesel cycle starts. They start at a compression ratio of 12 and they go way up to 24. Why 24? Why not 100? At some point, one, the temperature of the air would get really, really high. Two, it gets really, really hard to compress. There's only so much we can do mechanically. Okay, but once again, where's the fuel? Well, to make it actually work, what we do is instead of having fuel and air mixed together at the beginning um, and then igniting it with a spark plug, we instead inject fuel into the compressed, really hot air. And because that air is super hot, the fuel is going to automatically combust as soon as it comes in contact with it. So you can see this right here. We have a fuel injector that's injecting fuel into the air. The air is really, really hot. And because it's hot, that fuel will instantly combust. Boom, we have our power cycle. So this is how we switch from the auto cycle to the um, diesel cycle. And it's actually the, pretty much the only difference. The two cycles are very, very similar otherwise. Okay, so here's a TS and PV diagram for the ideal diesel cycle. And I've got a little GIF there showing it going on. Now, if you look at this, we'll use our PV diagram because we just did a problem with the auto cycle. Um, it looked like this. That right there, that constant volume heat addition, that was the only difference between the auto cycle and the diesel cycle. So for the diesel cycle, it's constant pressure heat addition. Slightly different. So otherwise, it's very, very similar. From one to two, we have isentropic compression. You see this guy go up, it compresses, and then it gets pushed back down. From two to three, I have constant pressure heat addition. Now, why is it considered constant pressure? Well, remember, this is an ideal diesel cycle. We're trying our best to make this guy look as close to the actual cycle as possible. Okay, we're trying to make it look as close to it as possible. So it's not the real actual cycle. Now, because of how the fuel injector works, the fuel is injected just like right before this guy gets to the top. And because it's injected right before it gets to the top, that combustion happens over a longer period of time. Okay, the power cycle happens over a longer period of time. And so it's closer, though not exact, to a constant pressure cycle. That's why we have this here. As we're gonna see later, there's even ways we can do a better job of that. We can make it even better than that, but we'll get to that later. Okay, after that, it's the exact same as our auto cycle. So we have isentropic expansion, the really super hot exploded gas pushes down. And then finally, we have constant volume heat rejection or where you're getting rid of all the air through our exhaust. So that is the diesel cycle. That's how it works. Now, some other things we need to think about here are something called the cutoff ratio. And we also have our thermal efficiency, which is a very, very fancy equation here. But similarly, this one is a function either of a compression ratio and our ratio of specific heats, or our cutoff ratio and our ratio of specific heats. So what is that three to one? Sorry, three to two? Goodness, said it wrong. That is simply saying, what is my volume after, after I have put that heat in? So I have combustion. When I have combustion, there is going to be expansion over that short time frame. And so it's saying, what is the expansion during that time frame 
before I get to my isotropic expansion, which is where I'm producing power output. So we're trying to simply say, how much does the air expand during that heat addition process? Where is that coming from? How is it doing it? Now, for the same thermal, sorry, for the same compression ratio, the auto cycle is going to be more efficient, which might surprise you. But here's the thing, that's for the same compression ratio. We don't start with the same compression ratio. Diesel cycle always has a much, much higher compression ratio than the um, auto cycle. So it can still be very, very efficient depending on how you are compressing the air and how much you're compressing it. And also what working fluid you're using. Okay, now looking at this skin, this is the cutoff compression ratio. And this right here is the um, cutoff ratio. Now, what is this showing us? As I note, this is for air. Well, first off, we're seeing, just like we knew for the auto cycle, that the higher our compression ratio gets, the higher our compression ratio, the more efficient our system is. So higher I can go, the higher my efficiency. But the second thing I'm going to see here is that the higher my cutoff ratio is, the less efficient I am. Now, why is that? What's going on there? Well, think about it this way. Okay, um, actually I'll draw in through a, the idea of my piston here. Okay, so there's my piston. It goes up. It, what's supposed to happen is that it gets to the very top. This is top dead center. And then it combusts. Boom. Okay? And all of that heat is supposed to be given at one time. Combustion is very, very fast, so it should happen. But here's the thing. That was when I had air and fuel mixed all together. The fuel is perfectly mixed with the air. Because it's perfectly mixed, everything's combusting at the same time, it's all good. With a fuel injector, though, you have to realize that when I'm injecting the fuel in there, you know, it's coming in, there's going to be a lot of fuel here, and it's going to kind of taper off. Now, it's going to mix very, very quickly. You're not going to be able to see the gradients with your eye. Um, you have to have some super incredibly high-speed, you know, Schlieren imaging to figure it out. But it's going to take a finite amount of time to mix. Because it's taking that finite amount of time to mix, I have expansion happening while it's mixing, while it's combusting. And since I have that expansion happening, what that means is that I have my guy going from top dead center down slightly before he finally gets full combustion. We'll just say full combustion here. And this distance right here is wasted, or at the very least is not as efficient as it could be. So the more I move down before I get the full force of that combustion, the lower my efficiency is because I'm not getting as much of that motion, um, as much of that energy at one time where I need it the most to cause me to have the most power. So that's what this is showing here. We want our cutoff ratio to be as small as possible. And technically, if we get it to a cutoff ratio of one, we're at the auto cycle. We're more or less identical to auto cycle. We don't have that happen. It's always gonna be greater than one, but if it could be one, it'd be fantastic. You've created a super diesel engine. Everybody loves you. Okay, and I think we'll stop there for now and finish this up next time. So thank you all, and I'll see you all in a bit. Bye-bye.